And I'm joined in the studio now by the COO of Woodlawn Hospital, Brad Rogers. Good morning, sir. Nice to see you, Paul. So uh, you staying fancy like, like Walker Hayes is? There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, it is the holiday season, so, you know, a little, little fancier dress every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, holiday colors occasionally. Absolutely. Yeah. So been a month since we talked last. Yeah. You've uh, officially been COO now for over a month. Correct. Has it set in yet? You know, every day. Okay. We're getting a little bit more, a little bit more uh, information, a little bit more uh, um you know, uh, direction with with working with the board and our uh, our new CEO, uh, CEO okay. uh, that, that started actually last week. This is day eight for him, uh, Mr. John Winnegar. Um, so uh, yeah, I think we're getting some things ironed out. We're we're looking forward to you know 2022 and and uh, coming up with some new plans and some new thoughts on on what we can do to better serve the community in the hospital. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely sounds like yeah. a great plan. Yeah. Uh, you guys had your meeting yesterday. We did. We had our uh, uh, December board meeting yesterday, uh, kind of the uh, beginning of the board meeting, and really the, the crux of the idea was uh, getting the new CEO, John Winninger, um, a chance to you know, meet the board and, and discuss some of his thoughts and plans and, and give them a chance to you know, uh, get to know him more and more. Uh, Mr. Winninger uh, comes to us after... 10 plus years experience working in critical access hospitals and rural health uh, organizations as CEO. Um, so got a lot of experience in that area. Um, you know, his background is a master's degree in business administration. And then he's a uh, fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives. Uh, so comes to us with just a lot of background in not only leading organizations, but in those organizations working through lots of uh, transitions, changes, new projects, things like that. So. Um, spent some time with the board yesterday and him uh, talking with the board about some of his hopes and plans for next year. You know, uh, we had started um, while we were uh, under the uh, leadership of uh, Paula McKinney, um, who is our chief nursing officer and vice president of patient services, looking at some ideas for strategic planning over the next few years and, and had gotten kind of a template down um, with the board of some ideas and, and Mr. Winninger wants to move forward even further next year in January, uh, late January, early February at the latest, have a formal strategic planning session so that we can look at the hospital and what are our plans over the next five years uh, okay. and, and you know set in some steps to kind of move towards those. And that also involves the community needs assessment. You know, community needs assessment is something that is, is our roadmap a lot of times to what does the community want in their health care, um, what are gaps in the health care that, that we can look at and find out if we can and fill, um, you know, what strategic partnerships with other community members and leaders can we do to improve access to care, quality of care, uh, and maybe even new service lines if it's uh, feasible. So those are all things that we're going to work on in January and February uh, with Mr. Winnegar's uh, support and leadership. All right. Sounds like uh, 2022 is going to be a good year for Woodlawn Hospital. We're going to be busy. Yeah. You know, you know changes. Uh, we were talking this morning, Mr. Winninger and I, and you know, changes healthcare right now. Yeah. You know, every day, uh, um, whether it be, you know, changing the shifts of staff to meet the needs of the the fluctuating volumes, or um, constantly changing external um, rules, regulations, and, and uh, goals. Um, that, that's kind of what we're doing. So, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of that in 2022 as well. All right. Well, it sounds like a good thing then. So, I mean, still still sad to see uh, Mr. Alley retire, but definitely sounds like we got somebody great to replace him that uh, is going to continue the same visions and add to those visions that Mr. Alley had. Yeah, I mean, I think Woodlawn Hospital, you know, with the leadership of the board and, and bringing in Mr. Winnegar. You know, their thought is always to the future. What do we have to do to keep Woodlawn, Woodlawn? Yeah. Um, Woodlawn is, as many of you know, it is a great place to work. Um, it's a great place to get care. We're one of the only four-star facilities around in any of the counties near us. Um, that's a huge thing. Um, I've been with them almost 16 years, and we've never been less than a four out of five-star rating. Um, that, that's something to say for a small community hospital. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we also talked at the board yesterday and, and we know that there's some need in the community and surrounding communities for some OB care. You know, Plaskai Memorial Hospital and Winnemac area um, 
have had some uh, losses in that area recently. Um, so we just want to make sure everybody knows, you know, we're, we're a partner with Pulaski County. We're a partner with, um, you know, those areas around us that need assistance. And, and so just letting everybody know, we do have, you know, good quality OB care, Woodlawn Hospital, Dr. Adebayo, Dr. Cly, um, they are open and open for business and, and ready to take on anybody who's had a recent change in their um, physician status. Um, if they need care, you know, please reach out and let us know. Um, we're there to help support the surrounding communities as well. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you'll leave laughing too when you see Dr. Klein and Dr. Adebayo because they'll keep you in a good mood. Oh, no question. Two of the most positive people that, that, that you will ever meet um, really anywhere. Um, they are they are absolutely in it for, for Woodlawn Hospital in the community and to keep growing uh, the practices and their services here kind of leads into perfect segue there Paul kind of leads into the next step which is um, you know we did some purchases yesterday at the board meeting oh um, some capital purchases that you know we kind of been putting off um, for most of the year and uh, went ahead and moved forward with those yesterday with board approval and, and one of those was a, a surgical set of equipment uh, called the Symphion that is um, for the GYNs to use for surgical procedures. Okay. Um, we'll allow them to, you know, take off uh, fibroids and polyps um, here at Woodlawn Hospital and continue to do those services. So just kind of another thing we're adding to that repertoire of things we can continue to do here at Woodlawn Hospital. Yeah. Um, so that was a great thing. Um, second piece of equipment that the board approved for um, purchase was actually four new anesthesia machines. Oh. Um, pretty significant purchase for Woodlawn uh, um, and absolutely something that kind of keeps us with that same idea of always staying ahead of the technology, making sure that we're up to date on everything. Yeah. You know, 2021 was uh, um, a tough year. We'll talk about the, you know, the financials here shortly, but it was also a year where we had a lot of uh, improvements in our technology at Woodlawn. You know, we had updates in the MRI, we had updates in the CT. Um, those systems now are the, the top of the line anywhere around. That's um, awesome. We were the first in the state to have the new CT technology that we have. And um, we, we're kind of a show site for other facilities to come in and see some of the new tests and things we can do. Yeah. Um, they're faster tests, they're more comfortable tests. They reduce the amount of radiation um, from the CT side um, for patients, which just makes things safer. Right. Um, it also allows results to come back to physicians um, quicker. Um, as a patient, you don't have to lie there still for as long either anymore. And you know, isn't that always a, a oh, good thing? That's absolutely. The best part. So w we had some really nice things happen as far as purchases last year that, uh, or this year, um, that I, I think we always need to note that um, we're still moving forward and advancing what we're able to do for the community. Good. So I like to hear that. So then, getting to the idea of finances in general. Um, Kind of a mixed month, you know, our, our goal every month is to, to hit our budgets. Um, and we did that in many, many areas. Um, however, there are a few areas that we're still a little bit short on compared to uh, what we'd have liked to. Um, so surgeries were down a little bit for the month of uh, November as compared to budget. Um, however, as compared to the change from last year, we're up to 1.4%. Uh, and then, you know, annually we're up about 8.9% as compared to last year. So still not back to those 2019 numbers, right? Um, but slowly moving forward in all the areas. Um, we did have some significant uh, um, areas that were well over budget for the month. Um, you know, all of our radiology procedures, x-rays, ultrasound, CT, mammography, and nuclear medicine all exceeded their budgets of 8.3 or more percent. Um, very busy month for that staff. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, likewise, laboratory. Um, do want to reach out and let, and let everybody know our laboratory has, over the pandemic, really surpassed any expectations. Emily Shouten, our director from laboratory services, has uh, been able to deal with the constant fluctuation of staffing that's required, as well as adding over a thousand procedures per month um, that we had never planned for. Wow. You know, with all the additional testing from COVID and those kinds of things, um, extremely busy. And, and so something we did new this year that's just a wonderful thing is there's a new leadership award at Woodlawn. And it'll be an annual award given to a leader who goes above and beyond on a consistent basis um, to move our mission forward. 
And right. Emily, Emily Shouten um, from our laboratory services was the 2021 inaugural winner. Awesome. And um, she's just an amazing leader, has done a lot of amazing things for that department, uh, worked countless hours to make sure that we're doing everything we need and, and have all the things we need for the community. So yeah. um, she did an amazing job this year and, and will, I know, continue to do that. So, um, you know, there are a few areas that uh, were a little bit lower. As surgeries are lower, sometimes that filters down to things like you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy being a little bit uh, uh, shorter. There's kind of that trickle down effect yeah. that occurs with uh, uh, surgical procedures, particularly with the fact that not only at Woodlawn, but across the state, elective procedures are still kind of up and down. Um, you'll see from time to time in the Star and, and, and through different news media outlets that uh, Indianapolis and Fort Wayne, some of their locations have suspended elective procedures for so many days. Yeah. Um, or not allowing procedures that would become an inpatient procedure. So some of your things like hips and knees, those reductions are true kind of across the state and across the Midwest. Okay. So that does trickle down. We receive a lot of referrals from outside surgical, procedure, uh, surgical centers as well. So all of that kind of factors into some of those things. So looking forward to, you know, still moving forward increasing those over time as, as surgery continues to increase and getting back to those pre-pandemic levels. I think we'll keep seeing a tick up in all of those other ancillary services. Oh, absolutely. So, um, real quick, just kind of a, a discussion of the actual revenue. For the month, we had uh, $14,238,959 of total revenue. Okay. And then we have, you know, those contractual adjustments and bad debt, uh, things that we always factor in of about $8.9 million giving us a total operating revenue of 5.5 million, um, operating expenses, 5.1 million. So that we ended up with a $473,000 um, net income for the month, uh, which was actually about $313,000 above budget. Yeah. So um, pretty good overall. Now the disclaimer here is always, as we talked about last time, we were very fortunate this past year to have received a significant amount of help from the federal government through the COVID monies through the CARES Act. Right. And so that has made a huge difference to our bottom line. So as I go into the year to date, we'll kind of look at that. We received uh, $149,382,000 in revenue. We had budgeted for $153 million in revenue. So we did do very well at keeping our expenses below budget. Um, we were budgeted for about $58 million in expenses and we were at 50 uh, six million six hundred thousand so about one point five million dollars under budget for expenses great job on the leaders part of doing that yeah um, so we ended up with a net uh, income year to date of three point six million now back up where we talked about the COVID monies right we received three point three million in COVID funds okay pretty close to our overall year to date Right. Um, if you add in some of our other monies we get from um, our long-term care contracts and some of our um, dish payments, which are um, to help take care of the community in which there's a higher volume of uh, Medicare and Medicaid, um, we ended up basically right around even on those funds. Okay. So our goal and our job next year is, okay, what can we do better? Right. What can we do to keep an operating income um, that is positive without those funds? Yeah. And it's going to be difficult. We're still in the pandemic. We're still seeing numbers high across the state. Right. So, you know, John Winnegar and I, the new CEO, talked about this morning, you know, what is the new normal? Yeah. You know, we've been in this now for a long time. And so I think all of us, both at Woodlawn and across the state in healthcare, we're looking at how do we budget and how do we work expenses? How do we uh, work staff for that new normal? Because our volumes fluctuate from very low of three or four patients in the hospital at a time to uh, 18 to 20 at a time. Right. And um, it's, it's hard to predict that. Yes, it is. So um, that's our goal for next year. Okay. That's our goal for next year. Absolutely. So good year overall still, but very thankful of the COVID monies that have came in to help sustain us. And that was really the goal of the federal government when they came up with those was, what can we do to get you back to your baseline? Right. to make sure that you're not losing money during this time frame. Because right. we know operating revenues are going to be down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like you guys have a lot of plans uh, going forward to get to where you need to be and to keep it right up there with uh, breaking even at least or 
and in, um, staying in the black every month. Yeah, I mean, that is the goal of both the board and, and, and ourselves as leaders at the hospital. You know, what can we do and, and um, to improve the profitability of the hospital? And really for one reason, sustain Woodlawn as Woodlawn. Yeah. To make sure that we, we keep growing in a way that's sustainable, to provide new services uh, to, to more people in the community and the surrounding communities and stay independent over time. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a board goal and as long as I've been here. Right. Um, and something we're going to keep working towards every day. All right. Yeah. Well, Brad, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, look forward to talking to you again in the new year. Absolutely. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a happy new year if we don't uh, talk to you before then. All right. Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll see you next month. All righty. Sounds good. Thank, thank you, you, Paul. <laughs>